Welcome to our lecture online. Here's another very interesting and challenging problem from the JEE advanced test. It is an actual problem from a previous test. It has to do with nuclear physics and in particular radioactivity. So let's read the problem. It says that for a radioactive material its activity A and the rate of change of the activity R are defined where A is equal to the negative of dn dt where n is the number of nuclei times t, and r is equal to the negative dA dt, the negative of the change of A with respect to time. Two radioactive sources, P and Q, where P has a mean life of tau, and Q has a mean life of 2 tau, have the same activity at t equals 0. The rates of change of their activity, R and Rp and Rq, at t equals 2 tau, so those are the rates at t equals 2 tau, are such that the ratio of r sub p to r sub q is n over e, e being the natural number, Euler number. What is n equal to, and n is an integer from 1 to 9? Now the first thing that I want to uh, pay attention to is the term mean life, because that's something we don't see very often, the mean life of a radioactive atom or molecule or I should say atom, inside a radioactive material. The mean life is the, the average life that an atom will exist before it decays. It's not the same as the half-life. The half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of them to have radioactively changed into another, another uh, form of the atom, another isotope of the atom. So the mean life, how do we relate that to the half-life? And let me show you in just a moment. So first of all, what I want to realize is that they both have the same activity at time equals zero, but yet they have a different mean life or half-life. The mean life and half-life are proportional to each other. So let's think about that. We have material P that has twice the rate of decay because it only has half the mean life of Q. So I would say there's twice as much Q as there's P because they have the same activity at the initial time. So the activity of P equals the activity of Q at T equals zero. Since the mean life here is equal to tau and the mean life there is equal to two tau, so they last twice as long before they decay, if their rate is the same, that must mean there must be twice as much Q. So Q equals two times P in the amount of quantity of the radioactive material that we have. And that's an important distinction when we start out with that piece of information. Another thing we should realize is that the number of radioactive atoms left in the material is equal to the initial that we started with times e to the minus lambda times t, where lambda is associated to the half-life by the natural log of 2 divided by um, the half-life, like this. Now it turns out that this is the half-life. If we have the mean life there, or we can say that t one-half, the half-life is equal to the natural log of 2 divided by lambda. Now t and mean life, so I'll call it ml for mean life, is equal to the natural log of 2 multiply times 1.443 divided by lambda. In other words, the mean lifetime is equal to 1 over lambda. So there's a direct, or I should say, an inverse relationship between the mean life and lambda versus lambda, this is the, of course, the decay constant inside your decay equation, and the half-life. So if you don't make that distinction, you're not going to get this problem right. So that's the first thing you have to realize. So now we're ready to start trying to figure this problem out. So first of all, we're going to write this equation for, uh, let's see here, we're going to write this equation for the activity and for the rate of change activity for both materials. So first of all, we can say that the activity A sub P is equal to the derivative of N with respect to time, so it's the derivative of this. So it would be N sub P sub naught times the negative lambda, so because we bring the lambda down, the, the, the coefficient from the t, that's the negative lambda, so that would be minus lambda, and uh, we'll write the lambda sub p, because they're going to be different, and um, sub p, 
uh, times e to the negative lambda times t. And then if we take the derivative again, you can say that the rate of change of the activity, so p is equal to the second derivative, so now we multiply, we get the positive value there, we get n sub p sub naught times lambda sub p squared times e to the minus lambda times t, and this of course also sub p. All right, so those are the two equations for the activity and the rate of change of activity for material P. Now we do the same for material Q. So we have the activity of Q is equal to N sub Q times uh, sub, sub naught, that's the initial amount, times the minus lambda sub Q times E to the minus lambda sub Q times T, and the rate of change of the activity, oop, that should be Q, not P, Q, is equal to N sub Q initial times lambda sub Q squared times E to the minus lambda sub Q times T. All right, so now we're told that the ratio of those two at T equals 2 tau is going to be N over E. All right, so now we're going to plug in the ratios, and we're going to plug in the ratios when T is equal to 2 tau. Now also remember that lambda is 1 over t mean life. So lambda is equal to 1 over t mean life. So we also have to use that information in our ratio. So let's try that. So we have the rate of p, the rate of p divided by the rate of q is equal to, that would be n sub p sub naught times lambda sub p squared times e to the minus lambda sub p times t. Now t, of course, this, and let me explain. I think, I'll, I, think I want to read this a little bit. So here I'm going to write r sub p when t is equal to 2 tau, and r sub q when t is equal to 2 tau, because then I can replace t by 2 tau, 2 tau. And how about lambda sub p? I can also replace lambda sub p as well. So let's do that. So instead of writing lambda sub p, lambda sub p is equal to, now notice the activity. Lambda sub p, the mean life is tau. So lambda is equal to 1 over tau for p. So I'm going to write that down in here somewhere. Let me make a little room here. So lambda sub p is equal to 1 over tau and lambda sub q is equal to 1 over 2 tau because the mean life for q is 2 tau. So now I have a distinction there. So minus lambda sub p, and lambda sub p is 1 over, 1 over tau, so 1 over tau, and I multiply that times t, which is 2 tau, like this. And then I divide that by n of q sub naught times lambda sub q squared e to the minus lambda sub q, which is 1 over 2 tau, 1 over 2 tau, multiply times 2 tau. So now you can see that the exponent will simplify here quite nicely for both of those. Now also, notice that the activity is equal to each other at time equals 0. What does that mean? When time equals 0, we know therefore that n sub naught, when this is equal to zero, oh, I have to go here. If this is equal to zero, because a sub p, a sub p equals a sub q, so I have a sub p here and I have a sub q here. If t is equal to zero, then np minus lambda sub p must equal n q sub naught minus lambda q sub naught. So in other words, what I can do from this statement right here, if this is equal to that at t equals 0, then this at t equals 0, e to the 0 becomes 1, and I can write that n sub p sub naught times a minus lambda sub p must therefore equal to n sub q sub naught times a minus lambda sub q. So I know that those two are equal to each other. Now notice I have an n sub p and a lambda sub p, an n sub q and a lambda sub q. So I can say that 
those two will cancel out. I'm left with the lambda sub p in the numerator divided by lambda sub q in the denominator because I'm only getting rid of one n and one lambda. And then e raised to the minus 2 in the numerator divided by e to the minus 1 in the denominator. Okay, now lambda sub p and lambda sub q I have defined over here. So I can go ahead and say that lambda sub p is equal to 1 over tau and lambda sub q is 1 over 2 tau and here I can write that this is equal to e in the numerator divided by e squared in the denominator. If I simplify that even more, then this becomes equal to 2 tau over 1 tau multiplied times e over e squared. Then the tau's cancel out and one of the e's cancel out, and so I'm left with 2 over e. And now I go back up to look at the question, and I realize that r sub p divided by r sub q, r sub q is going to be n over e. In this case, 2 over e, so therefore I can conclude that n is equal to 2, and that is the correct answer for this particular problem. Wow! So that is definitely a challenging problem, and even more so if we didn't realize that they're talking about the mean life not the half-life. The half-life is what we usually see, and that's the equation we use. The mean life, we multiply the natural log of 2 by 1.443, which turns it into a 1, and then we can see the inverse relationship between the mean lifetime and the decay constant. And of course, we have 1 for p and 1 for q, which is 1 over tau and 1 over 2 tau, which was given in the problem. We then also realize that since these are equal to each other when time is equal to zero, that this equation and this equation can be set equal to each other by replacing t by zero. So this goes to one, this goes to one, so this equals this. And we can use that to eliminate the n sub p and the n sub q and one of the lambdas. And then what's remaining when we plug in uh, the, the lambda and the time, the lambda and the time for the two equations, then we simplify. And yes, indeed, we get 2 over e. Therefore, n equals 2. And that is how that's done. 12 minutes. Yes, this is not a problem you can do in 3 minutes. <laughs> Unless you kind of fly through the problem, you just kind of see it, and you just kind of make quick assumptions, although that's a very easy way to make mistakes, especially something like this, and you do want to go through the rigor of working through the problem. At least I wanted to show you how it was done, in the limit of time, you of course want to try to go through this as quickly as you possibly can. But three minutes is probably not enough to do this. <laughs>